Hello, I'm John Sargent, back to chat with you about this and that. Happy to be a member of Saga's Not Going Out Club. I hope, thanks to Saga, we'll be able to get to know each other over the coming weeks. I was going to say, at times like this, I tend to think, but there has never been times like this. All right, in difficult, trying moments, I tend to think, how would my father have reacted? If I'm being honest, as long as his family and friends remained healthy, I think he would have quite liked the isolation. It would have suited him, and I have to admit, I'm much the same. There seems to be so much to read, so much to think about, so much to see, so much to listen to. I have to catch myself saying on the phone, I'm sorry, I've got to rush. I'm not actually in self-isolation. My wife of many years, Mary, is with me at home in Ealing in West London. Our new exercise, regular exercise, is probably making us fitter than we would normally be. But there has been a big change in lifestyle. As a young BBC reporter, I was sent to war zones. Now our roles are reversed. Mary goes off to the front line, carrying out what's deemed to be essential work, answering calls at Samaritans. And I stay at our house on those days to do the cooking. But back to my dad, of whom I was very, very fond. He was the vicar of Great Two, a quiet, beautiful village, blessed with thatched cottages and served by a bus to Oxford once a week. We lived in a large 18th century vicarage. Early every morning, he would walk to the great Norman church nearby and toll a bell, signalling to the parish his readiness to provide prayer and solace. No one ever came, and my father would return home to cook breakfast for his three young children. Later, he would walk briskly and purposefully through the village, doffing his hat to those who greeted him. He was a kindly, conscientious parson, but I sometimes had the impression that he could really do without his parishioners altogether. In hushed tones, he would whisper, they can be a bee nuisance. My father was a scholar priest, a learned man who later became a schoolmaster. His intellectual interests provided for most of his needs. That's what kept him busy. Each day now, I set off briskly and purposefully to walk to our local shops. Clutching a shopping bag, I hope, like my father, to appear to be on a mission. This part of Ealing has become an eerie sort of ghost town, although the silence is frequently broken by the empty double-decker buses roaring past. During a break while he had a fag, I asked one of the drivers what was going on. He said they'd been firmly instructed to maintain the normal schedule throughout the day, although he couldn't really see why. He wished all this was over, but he doesn't mind driving his bus without any passengers. At least it keeps him busy. Our small high street has changed dramatically. We used to cram in to the little bakery, but I was ticked off for forgetting the one-person rule. Now we queue outside, two metres apart. I thought they might announce, the baker will see you now. But this social distancing is better than when we were expected to bump elbows. I thought that was like sumo wrestlers hoping to get one over each other. Not British, really. In a letter to the Times this week, a woman described how, in the 1960s, the vicar at a church in Belgravia suggested they exchange the sign of peace, shaking hands or even embracing. Sitting in front of her was Harold Macmillan, the Prime Minister. 
He turned round and glared at her. Don't you dare. I wonder what will happen to social etiquette when this thing is over. Incidentally, we don't seem to have the courage to call it the plague. Virus sounds mundane and Corona like a soft drink. Anyway, when this thing is over, how much of these new habits will stick? Will the French see sense and stop kissing people they've only just met? Will our eyes still light up when we see a pile of loo rolls? I hope that we will be a bit calmer. One of my favourite sketches has the two Ronnies as village yokels. Looking out over a field, one of them says to the other, I comes here and sit and think. Then after a suitable pause, Sometimes I come here and I sit. <laughs> there has to be a lesson in that for all of us. Until next time, cheerio.